Hey, I'm here at the University of Texas J.J. Pickle Research Center, where the Construction Science Department is doing a really interesting study on the long-term durability of weather-resistant barriers. Let me show you what they're learning. Ooh, it's a beautiful day in Austin. As you can see, the sun is shining, and these samples that have been out now for almost two years are really getting some serious solar radiation. This test is really interesting because they've got 17 different weather-resistive barrier products from all different manufacturers that have been out and exposed to the elements for anywhere from one to two years. If you look at this tar paper sample, after the uh, particular product that they're testing has reached its UV life, they're gonna cover the top half of that with a uh, cement board and the bottom half is gonna be left exposed. You know, you think about what we're talking about here, these weather resistant barriers, they're gonna get covered. They can never be inspected. You're never inspecting this by your home inspector in the future. And of course they have to last for the entire life cycle of the building and they have to keep your building both dry and airtight. So we're asking a lot from these products. If it doesn't dry, it's gonna die. And I think that's very true when you think about weather resistant barriers. You know, I've seen a lot of tar paper failures in the past, especially ones that were continually wetted and weren't allowed to dry. But it's interesting here to look at this tar paper sample with all the accessories done perfectly and to the manufacturer's specs. And if you look closely, you're already starting to see some cracks uh, and some kinks in this armor. It's no surprise that most of the samples out here are fluid applied weather resistant barriers, but there's a couple of the standard ones. You know, you've seen me use a lot of Tyvek home wrap, and here's a great sample of that that's been up for two years. It's looking very faded, but otherwise still looking generally pretty darn good. There's some other peel and stick products up here as well. Uh, there's uh, Casella Dorkin's Delta Vent SA and Polyguard's Aluma Flash, both of which I've used and have liked a lot. But like I said, the majority of these are fluid applied. So there's two different varieties of that fluid applied. There's a thin mill. These are often uh, marketed to the residential market. And these are, these are almost a thick paint film or almost an elastomeric paint. Not my favorite just because they're not as durable or not as bulletproof. What you're seeing here, all these products are thick mill products. They go on anywhere from 30 to maybe 75 mils thick. So these are very thick. Some of them are even squishy, they're so thick. And when you've got a fastener like a brick tie that embeds in those, there is a little bit of a gasketing effect from a nail head or a screw head, things like that with these thick mill products. Very, very impressive. Hey, let's go talk to David Nicastro, who's leading this study. I'm here with David Nicastro. David's a professional engineer and has been doing building diagnostics now for 30 years. I know your company, Building Diagnostics, does a lot of work in, or does all its work in the commercial world. And you guys deal with a lot of building failures and, of course, litigation that, that arises from that. What advice could you pass down from your 30 years of experience to guys like me and my followers on YouTube that are doing mainly residential work? So do the laws of physics know whether it's hitting a commercial or a residential building? Does water know whether it's raining on a commercial or a residential building? Unfortunately, the laws of physics are the same for everybody. And so the same principles apply. Yeah. Uh, I wish that we could say that there's a different type of construction that needs to be used in residential, but that's sort of uh, a myth. I think mm -hmm. that there are less expensive materials, but if you want durability of products, you get into the same issues, which is about detailing and robust materials. But we're testing a lot of fluid applied water resistive barriers because we do believe that they are going to be the future. We think that uh, within 10 years or so that there's going to be a dramatic shift in the use of those products. There's already a shift in the manufacturing. Everybody that makes anything makes also a uh, fluid applied product. So clearly there's a trend in that industry. Thank you so much. Amazing research here. You guys are re really doing some good work. If you want more information of all the stuff we talked about, especially talking about weather barriers and how to waterproof your house, how to build a durable, long lasting house that's going to be around for generations, visit my blog at mattreisinger.com. Otherwise, I would love to have you follow me on Instagram or Twitter. We'll see you next time.